Over time, some models in your Rails application may become rather large and filled with methods that may not necessarily relate with one another. For example, let's take a look at this user model here that has a logic dealing with authentication through password or through OmniAuth, and it has some search functionality or converting records to a CSV format, and also for sending out invitation emails and handling a password reset behavior. So here we have all of this behavior which isn't related. I mean, what does password resetting have to do with uh, searching the user records? Not much. So why is it in the same model? Well, this is a common result if we're always just pushing behavior from the controller down into the model layer. In this episode, we're going to take a look at a couple of different ways to refactor this model so it's not one giant ball of unrelated methods. Now, before we get into refactoring, it's important that we have a good test suite to ensure we don't break behavior. I have a set of features here for testing at the high level. Features were formerly known as request specs, and I also have a model spec for testing behavior at the lower level. Now, if you don't have a test suite, refactoring is a great time to add one because you can just add the tests around the area that you're refactoring. If you aren't familiar with testing, check out episode 275 where I show you how I do these kind of tests. By the way, refactoring the user model will help improve this lower level test as well because right now we're testing all this different behavior in one file. It would be nice if it was more broken up. Now let's get started with our refactoring. First of all, making sure all of our tests pass and we can see they do. One common way to break up large models is with concerns, which David Hanemeyer Hansen explains in this blog post that involves moving behavior into modules which then you can include in the model. Now this is something that will be supported by default in Rails 4, but we can also do this in Rails 3. The convention is to place this under a model's concerns directory, however this directory won't be auto-loaded by default. Uh, to do that in Rails 3 you have to go into the application config file and change the auto-load pass to include the app models concerns directory. Now this will be automatically included in Rails 4 so you don't have to add this. Next we can go into our user model and extract anything we want into a concern. So let's move all this authentication behavior into a module under this directory. So let's call it authentication, and then make a module with that name and then paste in those details. Now we can't do this exactly the same way because we can't call has secure password directly here. We need to call it when it's included in the model. And we can do that in a couple of ways. A common approach here in a concern is using the active support concern module and then using the included block. And then that way this will be scoped to the context of the class when it's included. Another thing the concern module gives us is if we pl place methods in a nested module called class methods, then those will be added to the class when in the module is included instead of making them instance methods. So that is a convention here with using active support concern. And then we can't forget to go back into our module and then include that authentication module. And then run our tests again and they still pass. So this extraction works fine, but it's not really my preference for a variety of reasons. One issue I have with modules in general is that it's sometimes difficult to tell what context you're currently in in a method and what other methods you can call there. For example, what is self here? Well, in this case, it's fairly easy to tell that it's a user class or a user model, but that isn't always the case. So what I like to do is if I have a module that I plan to only use in one class is to namespace it with that class. So in this case, user, and that way it's under user authentication, so it's pretty clear on what class I plan to include this in. And then we would need to nest this under a user directory, like so. And then running our tests, we see that it still passes with that namespace. So now let me try applying this pattern to the rest of the methods in this user model. There we go, now this class is nice and clean. But I start to get some questions in my mind with this approach, especially if I run into a debugging scenario where the user model isn't behaving the way I expect it. It's difficult to see the full behavior of this model in one location. I mean, these modules could be adding anything from validations to associations to callbacks. I don't really know. Also, if I'm wondering what behavior a given method has when it's called on the user model, it's a bit of a guessing game to figure out which module that method is defined in. And we may find that some modules define the method again, overriding some of its behavior, which is a common practice in Rails internal source code, but I find it makes code pretty difficult to read and to find what exactly is going on when you're walking through the path. Sure, we could use grep or some project-wide search to help us out with some of these issues, but that's not something I want to require to understand my code. 
I like the way Steve Harmon described the situation in his blog as a bag of methods module and grep-driven development. Pretty funny. Anyway, if you want to know more about my issues with modules, I wrote an article where I go into further detail. I'll link to this in the show notes. Overall, I do think there are good use cases for modules, but it just feels too easy to abuse them when using concerns. Well, let's take a look at another approach that we can refactor this code. First, let me bring it all back here. All right, so when you're looking for other refactoring, sometimes it's a good idea to do a reverse refactoring, that is, make the code uglier before you focus on making it prettier. Usually this involves moving the code up the stack or moving it inline into the collar. So let's focus on these two methods here, authenticate and from omniauth. Uh, these both deal with authentication and are both called in the sessions controller, which is defined here. So this create action will check if we have omniauth credentials being passed in, and if so, we'll call that from omniauth method to build the user. Otherwise, we'll authenticate them with their username and password that should be passed in through the form. And then if that was successful, then we assign them in. Now let me move that user behavior in line. So in our user model, I'll grab that from omniauth method and just paste it into here and clean it up a little bit. And then we also need to do the authenticate method which is right here. And that is going to work a little bit differently because we need to set that instance variable. I'll set it like that. Also, our username and password are parameters. And these are called on the user model. And then the auth hash was called auth being passed into that method right there. Okay, now I can delete those methods in the user model, and let's see if we broke anything. Now, I usually just run the high-level features in these kind of scenarios because, of course, the lower-level uh, specs are going to fail when we're removing code. And it looks like they all pass. Now, we left our controller in quite a bit of a mess, and I'm just itching to refactor this method, but I want to point out that this behavior is very nicely isolated. If I'm trying to figure out exactly what the sessions controller create action does, then it's pretty much all just right in front of me. Lately, I've been asking myself two questions regarding code readability. How many different places do I need to look to understand what a given piece of code is doing? And how much other noise is there in code that doesn't relate to the code I'm trying to read? These questions have made me more sensitive about just forcing behavior from the controller into the model layer because what we're doing is we're taking this nicely isolated bit of code that happens when user triggers a specific action and just dispersing it through our model layer and through all of the other behavior of our application. Well then, maybe we should just keep this logic in the controller. I don't like that because I find controllers are difficult to test directly and also they have enough responsibility handling requests and responses and they have a number of actions that they're dealing with where the complex logic might be uh, exclusive to just one action. It's almost like we need another kind of object that's designed to refactor complex controller actions into, and that's exactly what I'll do. This is commonly called a service object, so I'm going to make a new directory here called services, and then I'll add an authentication uh, class into here. So now we have a place where we can refactor our action behavior. So in the controller, I'll instantiate that, and let's uh, pass in what it needs to do the authentication, such as the params to do the username and password authentication, or the omniauth.auth hash. And let's store this in an object, and then we can call methods on it, such as authenticated, and then call maybe a user method on this to uh, assign it to the session. To save us some time, I'm going to paste in the implementation into this authentication uh, class, which includes that user and authenticated method that we call in the controller, and that has the same functionality as we had before. Now, it might be tempting to further refactor some of this behavior off into the model, especially if you strictly follow some principles like tell, don't ask, or law of Demeter, but I personally prefer to resist that refactoring just because I want all this action-related behavior all in one place. So they can just jump from the controller, they see that it's using the authentication class, and then they can go here and see exactly what that action is doing. If we start refactoring bits and pieces into the model, then we're sort of faced back with our situation we were before, where the model becomes this grab bag of miscellaneous methods that aren't necessarily related. Now when I run my feature specs again with this refactoring, they all pass. But what about the lower level tests? 
For that, we can easily create a spec services directory and test the authentication class directly like I'm doing here, very similar to how I test the models. All right, so now that we have our authentication extracted, what about the other behavior in this user model? What would it look like if we extracted that? There we go. Most of this behavior has been extracted out into the various service classes. But does this mean our model layer is now just a basic data object? Well, I don't really think so. I don't consider it to be. I mean, it still has a lot of behavior dealing with validations, associations, and callbacks. Keeping the model focused like this feels quite nice. Another thing I like about this extraction is that uh, sending emails or maybe you're adding to a queue system or communicating with an external API, that can all be handled in a service object. So this way, you don't have to interact with this directly from the model, which never felt quite right to me either. By the way, I want to point out that there's really no limit in how you want to use service objects in the controller. I mean, we could uh, use uh, multiple service objects in one action, like we're doing here in this index action, to search the user records and then convert them to a CSV format. Or we could use the same service object in multiple different actions, depending on what it seems to best fit. It's really up to you and how you want to organize which actions use what services. But I encourage you, don't go overboard with this. I mean, you don't have to use a service for every action, especially if it's simple CRUD operations. I mean, just interact directly with the model is fine, I think. In my opinion, it works best when you have a complex controller action that needs to interact with a complex model and you don't have a good place to put that behavior. Uh, consider creating a service for that. Now, if a service object doesn't seem like a good fit for your scenario, don't try to force it. There are plenty of other ways that you can refactor large models. Uh, I encourage you to check out this post on the Code Climate blog by Brian Helmkamp, and you can find different suggestions on refactorings, including the service object, which I covered here. And maybe I'll cover some of these other refactorings in a future episode. Well, that's it for this episode on refactoring service objects to keep your controllers and models nice and clean. Thanks for watching.